If I were to tell you all the stories and anecdotes about the life of the blacksmith of Gomi Kabir, you wouldn't be sure whether anything I had said was true. The first time I recited these stories as a single collection was to a tutor while at art school, and although it evoked an attentive listening, she wasn't sure whether I'd just spent half an hour making stories up, literally expressing her disbelief once I'd finished, but with a smile which left me feeling quite pleased. In my mind, only stories that bordered on myth deemed a healthy response like doubt, and often doubting invites a search for more profound understanding. It must have also seemed highly improbable that I was related to this person. The earliest account goes back five generations and begins with the circumstance of his apprenticeship, where his mother, Eleni, as a young widow, fought and drew blood to ensure her son could be sent to the capital to receive the training of a blacksmith. Education at those times was not always guaranteed, but selling the Horafi, an agricultural field belonging to her late husband, made it possible for one of her children to receive an education. For many years I believe she stabbed a man just above his knee as he knelt for the third time to propose marriage to her. This seemed excessive, but the context was single parenthood, and Eleni, a shrewd individual, suspected this boast of romance hid intentions to exploit her vulnerable situation. Her mistrust was warranted as this fellow later stole her savings. But it was only until my late teens where the blacksmith's daughter, my grandmother, Hegaderina, revealed the actual events regarding the knee stabbing incident that Eleni was the victim of an attempted rape and the stabbing was in self defence. The blacksmith embarked on a life filled with unusual, tragically humorous and sometimes poetic moments. His first wife was said to have hair so long that wherever she walked it would sway and sweep up dirt from behind her. She too passed away quite young, childless and had no siblings, but when the blacksmith later remarried, my grandmother grew up with three sets of grandparents. His mother, the belligerent Eleni, died from eating poisoned mushrooms after ignoring the warnings from a villager that pesticides had leached into the earth where they grew. Her last words were, I've never died eating mushrooms before, and quickly get the priest, I think I'm dying. I grew up listening to these stories from my grandmother, one bizarre, captivating account at a time, and never all in one go. It took me many years and many visits to piece them all together, and I can only imagine that if she had recited them to me in their entirety, I would have felt as my tutor had, the uncertainties of a story full of coincidences, fortuities and one-liners. Instead, the peculiarities of their messages seeped deeply into my consciousness, and I obsessively documented the stories of things that had happened and other things that were made. In 2010, I proposed an exhibition at the doorsteps of the British Museum. Well, not quite the doorstep, but a road close enough. And in that exhibition, I focused on a single artefact, that of a walking stick made from playing cards, purportedly built by the blacksmith. After the invasion of 1974, Gragos left his village of Gomi Kabir in what is now northern Cyprus, moving south as a refugee. He took his walking stick, which travelled with him to England, where his eldest daughter, my grandmother, had been since 1954. He was later reacquainted at a wedding to an old apprentice called Dimitri, who as a young child would cycle several miles on dirt track roads to learn his secrets. By the time, and despite once having formidable strength, he found the playing card walking stick too heavy and difficult to use. Dimitri took the opportunity to propose a swap given a lighter wooden alternative, and the blacksmith, a seemingly practical man, obliged. By this point in his life, having put his tongs and hammer to rest, his priorities were watching wrestling on TV with his grandchildren. Now, without an original, or any pictures revealing its detail, and because the family lost contact with his apprentice, my grandmother's descriptions were the best reference and starting point to rebuilding. She describes seeing rings of red and blue with a lustrous finish. The original may have had a light brown patina, seeing as the cards were borrowed from multiple visits to the caffeineer. He also cut the soles of shoes into wedges and interspersed them along the curvature of the handle. The ends were finished with rings of copper, a material traditionally mined on the island. While Gragos would have used equipment normally found in his workshop, in 2010 I decided to adapt and build new tools such as a card folding jig, a hole punching press and a walking stick vice. It felt rewarding to develop methods with which to rebuild this unusual object and to experience the materials through the haptic process of making, but to also recreate an artifact which somehow missed being part of the permanent collection of the British Museum, or any museum in Cyprus for that matter. In the next video, I will begin to make the playing card walking stick, sharing a newer approach to its construction, my thoughts while making, and some other stories along the way. Mm -hmm.